This week on Lather Talk, we continue the conversation about shaving brushes and focus specifically on declaration grooming. Stay tuned for the episode coming right up. So we've talked a little bit about synthetics and the, on the budget side of what's available for brushes, but I also want to touch upon kind of what's on the higher end, let's say the luxury items. Uh, one comes to mind is Decoration Grooming, uh, an American artisan, Scott Stewart, and he does hand tight knots in addition to uh, making some great soaps and aftershaves. Um, Ross, I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so I've, uh, I've actually got a declaration brush here. I, I've been quite a fan for uh, for a couple of years now. Um, this one in particular is uh, in Scott's Theodore shape. Um, this was a, a one-off cast uh, blank and this one in particular has a, a batch five knot. So obviously um, I think Scott kind of coined the batch one, the B1, B2, B3 um, to his now recently announced he's on B9. Um, and so you know, each of them has their own different characteristics. Um, obviously, he it's it's a secret where he sources them from. I think that's kind of a big thing amongst the community, especially amongst brush makers. Um, and, you know, really the big thing uh, with, with Declaration is, like you mentioned, they, they are hand-tied knots. Um, and I think in this day and age, uh, the, old, the old adage goes, you know, time is money. And um, the time that it really takes to to do the hand tying, um, also his quality control. I think it's it it's not quite as well known, but you know his quality control even after you know tying those knots. Like I mean, he spends a, a lengthy amount of time combing them out, brushing them out, um, just really ensuring that by the time it's it's done and and you know the customer gets it, that it's it's as in good a condition as it could possibly be. Um, before they start using it so you know certainly they are they're definitely more of a on the higher price side of um, of brushes and and not options but um, you know they're they certainly do give you a different experience and I won't go into details about all the different batches we we could probably spend numerous episodes um, talking about the different characteristics of each batch but you know, Declaration is certainly, I think it's arguably the most well-known in terms of the, the higher end um, brushes and not options. But then, you know, you've also got fairly, um, fairly newer uh, sort of brush makers that, that aren't quite as well-known um, that are quickly hitting the scene now and, and becoming uh, more in demand, such as, you know, Black Eagle. Um, they also hand tie their knots, um, Varlet. Um, the, the, these are more, uh, I would even argue more limited, uh, brushes to, to get your hands on. Um, obviously with declaration, they, they're random drops and usually there's, you're lucky if there's maybe like eight to 10 brushes in a drop. Um, so they, you know, it certainly gets, it gets really pricey, you know, it, it's certainly a luxury item. Um, it's, it's not going to be in everybody's wheelhouse, but you know, if, if you have the means and if, if you do have the opportunity to even try it, or if you know somebody that has them, um, you certainly should give it a shot, at least just experience it, see, you know, see what it's like. Um, kind of, you might be surprised with some of, um, you know, the other options that are out there that, you, you know, you might not get to try otherwise. Um, but they're, they're obviously, it's, it, you know, artisans like, like Scott with declaration, I mean, um, his, his brushes have kind of withstood the test of time so far. And, you know, those, the drops, they go quick. I mean, there's no slowing down. Um, you know, he's, he's got, uh, a lot of loyal supporters and it's, it's not hard to see why I've, I've had experiences, um, with every batch except for seven and eight. So I, I've, mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough to try or own one through six and they're all in their own right, really fantastic options. So, mm -hmm. Um, there, but there's, there's, you know, like I said, there's other ones to choose from and, um, there's still very much a, a, a big 
a big part of the community in general. Awesome. Uh, actually, I didn't know that you had tried, um, you know, almost every batch. So that, I mean, that, that in itself. Yeah. But those, it, but those, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, I, I mean, I've been really fortunate. Um, I, ironically, I started out with batch three. That was my very first one, which uh, I kind of coined that batch, the, the redhead stepchild, because that's the one that's, um, I, I don't really know how to term it, but like the least luxurious of all the declaration batches so far. Um, but I, I still found it to be quite a, a, a good, you know, not. And I think looking back now, I actually think I've probably owned more B3 brushes than um, any other batch. But um, in, in terms of like what my favorite would be, it's, it's probably this brush right here. It's, it's B5. Um, but I'm also very fortunate to own B1. <coughs> and um, that, that one is definitely in a, a class of its own. And it, it's, it's not difficult to see why that kind of um, put declaration on the map in terms of brushes. Or quite, I, I, I got a question, uh, you know, uh, rather than just the strict uh, brush drops, have you, either of you had the knotting service done? So I, I actually literally, while he was just talking before he, <laughs> before he stopped, I was thinking that in my mind, I, I, I wanted to make a point to actually say like, you, nobody necessarily has to wait for drops. You know, it's, there's obviously the knotting options. I did actually have, um, I had a custom huck. Uh, I, I, I had a huckleration um, and I did utilize the knotting service. Then I think it was actually, yeah, that was still batch three um, that, that I ended up getting, but um, I haven't done the knotting services since then. I have used, yeah. So this was a gift from my wife uh, last Christmas. So this is a Carnivus and Richardson titanium handle. This thing's like, I think uh, Ross, you mentioned you had one of these handles too. That's just like super heavy. Mine was um, stainless steel, dude. It dude, was, it was wow. heavy. It's a weapon. I, literally my hand, like my fingers would cramp, like holding that <laughs> thing. It was, That's true. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. So, so this was with the nodding service and um, one thing to add about what you said, um, Scott will, uh, Scott from Declaration will fill the knot specifically to the brush, right? So there's a little uh, research that you need to do on your end to choose, to choose the right nodding service. What, you know, 24, mil 24 up to 30 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Um and this is a B, uh, B6, so this is still one of, my, one of my favorite. But like you said, I think B3, for what I heard, was a very scratchy, scratchy knot mm -hmm. in comparison to the other batches, right? Yeah, exactly. But I, I would say in general, like, I, I mean, it was still almost comparable in density to majority right. of them. Um, but there were also, you know, within those batches, there's still some variation too to to the hairs. And yeah. like, I think my my very first um, declaration brush, it was actually a huckleration, and that had a B3 in it, and it was uh, 27 millimeters. And that was probably actually the least scritchy of the B3s that I've owned. Um, I still have a Wolf Whiskers with a B3 knot in it, and um, and that one is a little bit more on the scritchy side, but I, I, I don't mind it. It's not like yeah. overbearing. It's not like, it's not like it hurts my face at all. You know, like right, it, right. It, um, it loads. So it, it still feels good on my face. Like I really, I don't have any complaints about it. Um, but I know a lot of people just, they weren't fans. It, it, it's, it's really different to enjoy a batch like that when you're spoiled with, you know, like your B fives and your B ones. Um, the ones that are just absolutely luxurious gel tips and just you know um that side of the spectrum right that that makes sense where amongst collectors who have tried all the batches own all of them right. um in, in a vacuum you're like oh yeah this is you know this is easily the worst of it but like the worst of a declaration not is still <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know like so much better than i guess it's like having the 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 worst house in like the best neighborhood in your in your county you know <laughs> like, sure <laughs> i don't know so I, I as someone that does not own a a declaration um i haven't tried one anything like that i think the closest the uh, um hand tied uh brush that i've used i used the simpsons i think it was a it was a manchurian i think it was a chubby too um and i just had a, I, I borrowed that brush and like i was astounded by just kind of like the difference so um i don't know like could either of you kind of maybe um would you be able 
to just kind of characterize the difference between like those brushes and something like you know on on the lower end of the scale like is there is there such a degree of quality um you know between the costs of, of those types of things have you tried simpson's uh john i i have not i think the closest thing um it's a different tier right but um I'm thinking Ma Maga Razor's SHD knot, which um, I think a lot of people, and myself included, would put it there. <laughs> Ross is, for, the, for those listening at home, Ross is showing <laughs> an example. Um, but it, it's a great knot. It's about, one thing we haven't discussed too is that specific pricing, right? So sure. the knotting service, I believe, runs between 100 to, what is it, like 140, depending on the, the size of the knot. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Well, with the um, with the recent like tariffs, I know that Scott had oh, to, yes, to yes. increase the the prices. <clears throat> um, so I want to say it it's probably um, it's closer to like around one forty to. Okay, I'm checking it right now. Yeah, it's it's. I want to say it starts at one forty four for twenty four millimeter, and then it kind of goes up in increments of of twenty. Um, I think it's somewhere around there. Okay. I think thirty millimeters is like two oh four. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah, so obviously, yeah, that, I mean, that's, that, that's more than some just, you know, it brushes themselves with, you know, with other types of badger hair. Um, so it, it, it's certainly pricey, but again, you know, it's time is money and it's quality, there's the quality control factor. And um, I mean, Scott's even had to take time out. I mean, he's literally been injured from, <laughs> from combing out, you know, yes. badger hairs and, and, uh, you know, he, he really, he puts a lot of time in it. And then that's, that's totally separate from, you know, making soaps and aftershaves and the occasional EDPs. Um, it, it's quite remarkable what, what he does as a, as a one man show. Yeah. There's certainly like craftsmanship skill and like an art to, to what he's doing. So, and, and, and again, I, I just asked for the pricing just to compare. So, if we're talking about for 140 and up for the not just the knotting service, mm -hmm. um, the compare let's say a 26 millimeter um, SHD knot for Maggie razors runs about uh, at full retail. I think around 40, 45 dollars. So um, directly comparing the, the two of them, I think you're gonna get a shave no matter what. I think we can probably say this amongst for comparing soaps, for comparing razors, right? You're gonna <laughs> the job will get done, but um, as far as the, the feel of it, there is a significant significance um, in how dense that knot is. Even if you like just squeeze the knot, whether you're cl you know cleaning it out after or not, you could feel the difference. Um, so I would say it's it's a way to pamper yourself. It's not by any means a necessity, but for folks that um, such as us and folks that, who will be listening to us talk about this, uh, they would appreciate. Um, experiencing both i think sure. i think um I, I mentioned it like in one of the other podcasts like about the difference between like a rolex and a timex like both do the same thing but there's just a significant like craftsmanship certain quality with a luxury item you could do the same thing with cars like like a bugatti versus just like a mercedes versus like a toyota you know and things like that there's there's um you know Kind of just uses for the road then there's like uh like a premium aspect then you just go like full luxury full exotic full like you know handcrafted um you know to the nines and I, I guess that would be probably just you know the the comparison you know the the analogy um agree disagree yeah i, I definitely agree with that and and just to go back to actually to your your other question um about the the simpson comparison um, I have tried the Chubby 2 in Super Badger, and I can tell you that um, the, the Simpson knots are arguably, at least the one that I had specifically, um, felt even more dense than any declaration knot that I've tried. With that said, though, I think um, the, the issue that I experienced with it is the, the loft. I think it's set a little bit low, so it just makes that brush incredibly dense and it it's almost to the point um you can't really get much of a splay or you mm. really got to force it into your face to get any sort of of splay at all and in that sense like you really aren't getting sort of that 
I guess, luxurious face feel. Um, it, it, it just, it was far too dense for me. And I don't, I don't know if, if potentially a loft change would do that, but you know, the thing with Simpson too, I mean, the, the Simpson brushes are typically more expensive than, you know, like the declaration brushes. Um, and for them, I think it, it really comes down to like a tradition, how long it's been around for, how, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, how many people, I mean, obviously it's based over in Europe. So there's, you know, there's a different sort of, uh, I, I guess, fan base over there that, that know the Simpson brand and that kind of gravitate towards it. Um, whereas like we all recognize it here, but it's, you know, it's, it's not quite the same. I think it, the fact that it's, you know, not, I think we all are really drawn towards the American made sort of products nowadays. I think it, it's, it just sounds a little bit more appealing. Um, and so I, I think, you know, we all tend to do a little bit more business business with people here, such as like declaration um, to try to keep things, you know, internal, I guess. No, I, th- I think that's a fair assessment. Um, I mean, that could be another subject altogether. Uh, pro- probably should have it, you know, but like, uh, like European brands versus American brands versus um, uh, some of the even Asian brands that are, you know, kind of out there. Sure. And so that, you know, we, we, we basically pay like a premium for the European products and vice versa mm-hmm. and things like that. I know that there, that's like a lot of commentary online, you know, um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I remember, I remember when I used the, the Simpsons Mentry and like, it felt good. Like, like, I think the loft, you're right. The loft was, um, um, was set so that it was, it was pretty dense, uh, more dense than probably what I was used to. Um, but it, it felt pretty good. I can't comment on the super badgers or, or some of the other ones. Sure. Yeah. And I haven't, I haven't tried the Manchurian or, um, the silver tip option that they have as well. Um, I have heard the silver tip is a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more luxurious, I think less, less dense feel, um, to it, but I haven't experienced it myself. Yeah. I do wonder, um, it's like, it's a lot to keep track of, right? Like the different, uh, I was just using Simpson as an example, because all these terms, and I feel like because they are a legacy brand, um, Manchurian, silver tip, uh, offhand, do you know, like, is there a distinct hierarchy? Because I, I always felt like silver tip is like, um, thinner was a finer finer hair so it splays more easily but then if you're if you want a little bit more backbone you would go to another option like a like a two-band finest i think off the top of my head um that that that's kind of been my experience too i mean i i have again i haven't tried simpson um you know silver tip uh specifically but i have tried other silver tips and and that that that's held true you know it's definitely finer uh finer hairs but um, yeah, less less backbone to them typically. Um, I've always wondered if that could be you know remediated. I don't know if um, you know I, I, maybe the fact that uh, that they do it hand tied, you know that that really could add to the experience and um, make it a little bit more worthwhile. I think as as opposed to you know, like my experience with the Super Badger. Um, I don't I I don't know for sure if anybody else actually hand ties. You know silver tip uh fibers or hairs but um i I could certainly see that allure at least with with simpson and um you know it it might provide actually a better experience than most other silver tips that that i've tried in the past i would definitely consider myself still like just like a rookie in terms of like badgers because like there is so much variation you had mentioned john like just so much misinformation out there so you don't really know unless you like get stuff you know what I mean? And let's you like literally try it out. And it's kind of like, you know, with soaps, like a lot of us, if we don't have a store near us, you know, we're just kind of like, we're going blind, like on a buy, you know, like, oh, those are, those are the notes. I know exactly what that's going to smell like to me. Yeah. And, and I feel right, like it's right. almost the same. It's the same with like some hardware, you know? Um, I think razors, uh, you know, things that uh, like, you know, there's a little bit more um, objectivity with it. But yeah, like, I mean, like you mentioned, like, like a silver tip. I have one silver tip here. This is from golden nib, uh, you know, um, but like we had mentioned earlier, like, um, 
on this one, this is the West Coast shaving, the three band finest. And then I have a bunch of like the Omos, you know, and things like that. And I mean, I mean, is there a, a difference in, in a lot of these to me? Like, yeah, but it's really minimal, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. And so that's, that's, that's also part of the question on like, uh, you know, on when you, um, go with like a super uh hand tied knot like luxury knot um you know like i'm glad that there's a a huge discernible difference you know because i would at least expect that you know yeah i mean i think that's the you know that's certainly the argument it's it's really kind of like your interpretation of how dramatic the characteristics of a knot are as in and comparing it to the price i guess um yeah i think we in general, I think we're all, I mean, we all want that luxurious experience, but, you know, budget plays a, a, a big part of it. But, um, you know, you can, you really can get nitpicky in terms of, you know, the face feel, all the characteristics that you're looking for. Um, you know, s j there's just some that just, it feels better than others. And, you know, and, and if it happens to be more, like, are you willing to to fork out what it costs, you know? Um, that's just kind of one of those decisions where you gotta be budget conscious or, you know, decide if you have the means to do it and if it's, if it's worth it to you. Um, you know, obviously if, I mean, badgers, we've already touched on it I and mean, there's a maintenance factor to it. So, you know, how long is it going to last? Is it going to last a lifetime? Who knows, but you know, you, you got to take care of them. And, um, you know, especially with, with the higher priced ones, it's like, like anything else, you just got to take care of it and. Um, you know, and it'll, it should last you for a while. Yeah, I think, and just, you know, through our discussion, the, the whole topic of, of brushes, even more so than other aspects of, of this hobby, it, it, there's so many variables. And I, I think, I, I, I just wish there's something more like hard metrics, right? Like we talk about splay versus backbone, but it's like, how much is the right splay? How much is the right backbone? Like mm -hmm. we know that's a preference difference because the, the guy who goes for bore brushes wants a lot of backbone and, and it's not, it's not scared off by a little bit of extra exfoliation, right. For, um, in, in the process. But, uh, if you get into kind of like putting in your own knots, like, uh, like, like Jared had, had mentioned, he, he's been, um, trying out various knots from Omo, uh, where you set the loft, that uh, and even for Simpson, right? You're like, if, if it was set a little higher, you'd be more splay, but maybe that's that's kind of their signature thing, sure, right? So, like, there's some like between preferences between the user as well as the actual uh artisan or vendor, uh, it, it is a very hard topic. So, I mean, you know, I, I definitely feel for folks just getting into it, and, and this, you know, this and maybe like what blade you prefer, there's almost like no other way to find out what you like besides trying it or have, you know, have friends that, you know, like, like you said, you can borrow, um, what is a Manchurian versus a super badger? Well, you put, you know, put them head to head. Or I, I think I, I definitely have seen, um, YouTube videos where people lather same side. I mean, you can, whatever, you know, whatever ridiculous lengths <laughs> you want, you, you want so to. Either. I was gonna I was I was gonna make the comment that I and I kind of just thought of this now like like you know as far as my brushes I collect them like like action figures <laughs> you know like like on, honestly and like part of it is just like oh well like I would get this because it matched like the label on a soap you know like like col to color coordinate for shave of the days and things like that you know. Um, it does seem kind of silly, but I mean I think a lot of people. I mean I'm I'm guilty of it too. I mean if if you know there's other products or things that you're using and it, and it might match and you know that it's going to be a brush that you'll enjoy. I mean, I think we're, I think a lot of us are guilty of it, whether or not we really want to admit it is another thing. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll totally admit to it. I mean, um, I love aesthetics. I think it's, uh, you know, more, more so than razors, right? Like if we're talking about color and we didn't talk too much about, like the actual handles um, of, of brushes and all the many options. Like back in the day, it's like, it's 
white slash ivory or black and ebony, maybe a few other patterns in between. Now with, um, especially if you talk about resin, there's so many colors. And I actually like the analogy of action figures because it, you know, they are bright or there are options that are super bright. You can customize them nowadays. Like, you know, we've seen, uh, what, what do you call it? Like, like all the colors of the rainbow, <laughs> like in one brush. And, mm-hmm. and, even, and that's even more subjective than, <laughs> there, yeah, so Gerard is literally holding up a rainbow brush right now. Very nice. Who made that one? Uh, this is from Oz Shaving. <laughs> oh, nice. So Oz has been doing some great work. Um, we yeah, are I, don't, early- I don't know that this could come through. Uh, the, the, yeah, my lighting is not great, but yeah, this one is, it, it's got crazy coloring to it. Yeah, almost like a, a marble-like effect. I uh, think I see like blue, brown, yeah. gray, white, kind of swirled all together. So yeah, it's, it's like a, like a ice, ice blue mm-hmm. with like, it's down here. It's like crimson red. It's Oh, it's great. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Yeah, this lighting does not do it justice Sorry. at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I really like that aspect of it. And that, yeah, that is even more subjective. But yeah, I, I definitely picked up brushes because it matched one of my favorite soaps, like um, like Mammoth Soap's Mood Indigo, which has a purple and black label. I, I definitely found a <laughs> one a, a brush that had, I think, black, purple, and maybe gray in it. And it looks awesome. <laughs> I'm happy with it. Does that affect my shave? No, not at all. It's it's literally you just like enjoying, you know, like the, just the product. Like it, it's like yeah. a kid playing with his toys. It it is, yeah. And then you know, it's just a part of being in this hobby. Really, <laughs> it's it's all it comes out. It's it's a it's For sure. just what we do in this hobby. It it sounds ridiculous, I, probably to the outside <laughs> world, but it's just what we do. We all so, yeah. For for someone that's not necessarily into the hobby or a beginner, and they you know they they they're wondering like you know why would a person have this many? like that's the reason that is, like why would we have this many? There is no legitimate reason other than we just like to to color match. It's like a person that's like into clothes, you know, that wanted yeah. to have like the yeah. spot on outfit for the day, you know, uh, and things like that. It's what did you shave with, you know? It's just what we do. <laughs> Yeah, I think sneaker sneaker heads would definitely appreciate that because that's all about what colorway you got. And then, <laughs> oh yeah, my, my brothers. Uh, I don't think they're going to listen to this. Uh, yeah, they're <laughs> one of them. His first job, I think, was was at a Foot Locker. Total sneaker head. Ooh. And and yeah, I mean, just people who have, you know, there's so many things like so many similarities. Um, you know, um, like quick strike drops. Drops out of nowhere, um, <laughs> yeah. you know. Certain co- like waiting for that colorway that you want to come out, waiting for that collaboration to come out. You're like you're mm-hmm. seeing that more with with a lot of places, and it's it's just like you got to be ready because you want to be uh, uh you want to add that to the collection or or just you know flaunt it flaunt it if you got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah take a picture, share it with your friends, put it on social media. <laughs> I mean, there's people that appreciate it, right? I mean, that's why technology has brought us all together. We can share in these little in- idiosyncrasies. <laughs> but I-, I guess to kind of wrap things up, uh, I'm curious, do you guys have either, whether it be a knot or handle or artisan, right? Is there a brush that's on your bucket list? Gerard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like, dude, Ross already got his, like he's got, you know, and everything. Did he? Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, yeah, I've definitely thought about uh, getting, a, getting a hand tied either from declaration through a nodding service or um, I know um, like dogwood handcrafts, like, you know, that he makes like fantastic handles um, and, and you, he can send them to, uh, to Scott to, to knot them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like at a discount that, yeah uh 10 10 i believe yep okay um guys checks in the mail thank you <laughs> nice plug, nice uh, plug. um <laughs> oh, yeah i mean i i think that's probably um like up there um you know uh i think i made the joke last time like you know i could get it it just means like oh it's like 
six or seven sets of soaps and splashes that I would just like not get instead. And I would just like put that, you know, that, that towards it uh, or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, definitely like having, like having one is, is probably up there. But at the same time, I think I, that shouldn't, because there's a lot of good products, you know, whether it's like, like this knot from, from Uma was like 15 bucks you know and and it's and it's super it's pretty dense you know um i think that that people should just you know consider like just looking at all of the fantastic like craftsmen out there um and i'm sure that they already do uh but if you're like looking on on you know going up and stuff like that just see what's out there i mean we only we predominantly mentioned declaration uh but whether it's them whether it's our shaving whether it's um that darn rob turn and shave um you know uh whatchamacallit uh neil with uh heritage collection shaving is coming out you know has like all of these classic vintage retro brushes and brush handles and things like that out there like it is a really good time to be into like hardware you know like just i think would say even from like what three four years ago you know like, like you just had a very limited option, very limited pricing. And now you, you know, whatever you're willing to spend, like you can get it. Yeah. I think, um, when I first got into the hobby, like the, the custom maker in the community was, uh, was Peter Wolf from Wolf. Yeah, was I, God, um, yeah, dare I, I forget. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was like the guy and, and that was, you know, again that was very early on and I, I feel like just ever since then i mean the brushes i mean the brush makers have just it that whole scene has just exploded i mean we are we're definitely spoiled when it comes to brushes and, and um, if we didn't mention you like we're, we're not like holding anything like we're, yeah. we're just like kind of just like talking about this paladin's yeah. another one you know Mazingo. yeah I mean, there's yeah there's there's tons out there and I, it's i mean there's so many options and, and for all budget ranges too. I mean, you really, <laughs> you can't go wrong. If you, you'll find what you're looking for, um, you know, regardless of what your price range is really. Yeah. I, and actually, I think if you are on Instagram or, uh, you know, other social media where people are posting shave of the days, I think that's a nice way to, like, if you do can't find eye catching uh, brush, it's, it's worth reaching out to that person to find out, you know, Oh, uh, um, what the price range is, you know, was the custom piece. Cause obviously custom piece is going to be more expensive or even just un unavailable, right? Like sometimes there's an exclusive sure. exclusivity there. Um, uh, but to answer my own question, I, I, I think on my list is to pick up a declaration uh, Jefferson handle. Um, I think it's just a really great shape and, there's a lot of cool pores and designs. And, and I think the George, like you said, like it's it's a matter of balancing your budget, right? Like if you if you pick up a luxury item, it just means well, you can either unload and thin the herd if you have like 25 brushes or too much so soap or whatever. Or or trade for stuff, you know, like I've used the resources that you have. But I know like at some point, that's one I, I like to add for myself at least. Yeah, the Jeffersons, it, ironically, I used to not be the biggest fan of Jefferson handles. Uh, oh. I, I almost I almost found them to be like just too too normal, too average looking. Mm. But that's that's all changed. Um, I mean, the ergonomics of it are fantastic. It's a it just it's like a classic. It's a classy shape. Um, you really can't go wrong with it. It's you know it it definitely has bumped up for me. Um, I I mean. I, I feel like I'm, I'm spoiled enough having, you know, declaration already and, and yeah. having some of the, uh, you know, like the elusive V1. But if you're really twisting my arm for an answer, I'll, I'll say probably, you know, uh, a Franklin, uh, one of the old school, like Franklin declarations. Um, those were the 30 millimeter ones that, that he used to uh, make and hasn't done, I think, since I think he stopped making them after B3. Okay. So um, it's, been, it's been a while. Yeah, it's it's been a while. I again, that was like when I just when I was new to the declaration scene and you know hadn't really quite figured it all out yet. But um, yeah, one of the older Franklin handles, um, I, I it probably batch wouldn't matter to me. Um, I know B two is also a very elusive one. 
uh, that you don't really see very often. But I was always a big fan of um, his initial <laughs> one-offs were the Star Spangled Blue handles. Um, oh, those that, are those that, are real that, nice. Yeah, yeah. I I see. I don't know even who's posting them on Instagram, and I see them, and I'm just like, dude, that's so nice. Yeah, it's, it's so nice. Yeah, so it, probably a, a Franklin Star Spangled Blue would be Ooh. a bucket list. You're gonna start hunting now. <laughs> I, I, I I wouldn't even bother. No. <laughs> Just, I, I wouldn't even bother. Hey, 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 you know what? No, like that's something that I don't think we mentioned. I think you can get a custom for a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, right? yeah, sure. So yeah. so, so that can. is an option. Uh, uh, just to put it out there. So so don't fret, don't fret, Ross. So so maybe that'll be that'll be what it takes. <laughs> start storing away the pennies now. Just don't, buy sh- just don't buy any shave stuff for however many you, 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 you don't go crazy with the, with the software pickups. So like, it might take you some time. <laughs> right. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. All right. Well guys, it's been awesome talking to you about brushes. I know we kind of want to scratch the surface, but you know, uh, for, for folks listening at home or uh, watching at home, if there's any kind of specific brush related questions you got or topics that you'd like to hear more about, you know, please let us know, drop a note in the comments, send us an email. Um, otherwise, I want to thank, you know, thank my co-host Gerard and our special guest Ross uh, for coming on. Uh, Ross, can you uh, share kind of social media where people can find you? Sure. Uh, on my Instagram, uh, my tag is uh, at Nova underscore shaves. And um, I, I post pretty frequently and I'm, I'm definitely accessible. So if anyone ever has any questions about anything they see, um, you know, I, I, on my account specifically, you know, definitely feel free to, to message me. Awesome. And Gerard, where can people find you? Um, at Hey Gerard Shaves on Instagram or Hey It's Gerard on Twitter. Um, those are probably the two easiest ways to get a hold of me. Awesome. And you can find me, John um, Leatherhog, on almost all, all major platforms Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So I want to thank you guys for. You know, making it all the way through. Uh, thank you for listening and your time. And we hope you can join us next week. Take care. And that concludes our episode on shaving brushes. I want to thank our friend Ross for taking the time out to talk with us. You can find all the social media links for Ross, Gerard, and myself in the video description or in the show notes. Also, we want to invite you in on the conversation. Have you tried brushes for decoration grooming? Do you have a favorite brush maker? Let us know in the comments or send an email to latherhog at gmail.com. Thank you all for your time and support, and we want to wish you a happy holiday season. We hope you'll join us again next week when we talk about limited edition releases and small batch releases. See you then.